Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to another Chem Complete Lecture. I'm Professor Tomney, and I am going to be taking you through another aldehyde and ketone lecture today, where we are going to take a look at acetyl and ketale formation, which is when aldehydes or ketones are exposed to acidic conditions in the presence of an alcohol. And what results is an acetyl or a ketale. So that's coming up on the channel right now. Okay, thank you for joining me today for your learning needs. So for acetyl and ketyl formation, what we're really looking at is, and I'll use a ketone as an example here, you've got the exposure of a ketone or an aldehyde to acidic conditions, and these conditions are reversible. And unlike the imine and inamine formations, the acidity can be pretty high here. In fact, you want it to be relatively high. So some sort of a concentrated acid can be used uh, in order to get this to run. And then you're going to want some sort of an alcohol. So we'll just keep it simple and use methanol here. And the result that you would see coming out of this is the base chain of the aldehyde or ketone. So here's the base chain for the ketone that I had over there. And then in replace of the carbonyl, you would have two ether groups. So in this case, it would be two methoxy groups that you would have like this. Okay, this is an important reaction in aldehyde and ketone chemistry because there is a lot of biological relevance. And I believe it's certain metabolite pathways actually utilize this or the imine and inamine formations. So when we take a look at this, the first step is the exposure of the ketone or the aldehyde to the acidic conditions. And because they're highly acidic in this case, we are going to have a situation where the lone pairs on this oxygen will reach out to the proton. And then that's going to result in what we call an activated carbonyl. So you'll have an OH group with a positive charge instead of just the regular carbonyl. And because of that positive charge, this oxygen has become even more electronegative in terms of its desire to pull or remove electrons from the carbon down here. And so this carbon is highly electrophilic. It has been activated towards the reactants in solution or towards the nucleophiles. Now, methanol or whatever alcohol you might be working with is going to be what comes in and acts in that step as a nucleophile. So we're going to get the alcohol to come into the carbonyl and these electrons from this pi bond can go up to the oxygen to get rid of that formal positive charge and we can move to the next step. So in the next step, you're going to have an alcohol at the top after that pi bond has moved up. And when the alcohol that came in to the carbonyl attached itself, it still brought its proton along with it. So we now have an alcohol at the bottom that has a formal charge of plus on that oxygen, right? So this is the methanol that came in in the previous step. Now in this step, we have a proton transfer. So sometimes you may see books where they basically have the water come in uh, or the alcohol come in and it ends up taking this proton and then it gives it to this OH up here. Usually when I'm teaching this to my students, I just tell them we're going to have a proton transfer here and the proton transfer is basically going to be moved off of the methanol portion down here and it's going to be put onto the hydroxide up here to make it water and then water is going to become a good leaving group. So that's the next step that we're going to be involved with here. And that proton transfer, when it occurs, will make water the next group to leave or to depart from this structure. So we can rearrange this here. And the step right in between here, the structure when uh, you have the OCH3 and the OH as the proton's been removed and is kind of being transferred, is called a hemiacetyl, meaning a halfway acetyl. We've done one of the two alcohol additions. Okay, so we've got the CH3 groups here. Now I've got OH2 or H2O. 
right, plus, and then I have the OCH3 group down here. So the proton transfer is going to now make water a good leaving group. And then when the water leaves, in order to help this carbon, this oxygen will donate a lone pair that it has temporarily until the situation has resolved itself. Okay, so what we end up with is an intermediate, kind of like the very first one, where we're going to get an activated carbonyl compound. Now this time, it's going to be the double bond O and a CH3. Okay, so don't get confused because I'm drawing it on the top now. That's just coming from this portion right down here. And then I still have the CH3 on the other side. So at this point, I can now bring in the um, alcohol again. So I'm grabbing another one of these CH3 OHs. So you're really going to be using two equivalents of this, right? In order to get this reaction to go. So you need CH3 OH again. That will come in and attack this carbonyl opening this up to the OCH3 group and we're going to be again in a similar situation where we now have a protonated alcohol here and so we'll go ahead and draw the last intermediate that we need almost done this reaction students usually are not thrilled with this reaction just because of the sheer length and the number of steps in it okay so we've got uh, O h and then you've got the ch3 here sorry that's a little crowded down there and then you've got the och3 up here right this would have a positive charge and then if you take a look water was released right down in this step so we do have water sitting out in solution so the water can come in and it can regenerate the acid catalyst the h plus that we started with so it'll grab the hydrogen here these electrons can go to this oxygen to get rid of that formal charge. And then there we are. We now have the acetyl or ketyl. Now, the term acetyl is when you have an aldehyde that you started with. And if you had a ketone that you started with, you use the term ketyl for the final product. And that is what this is. This would be a ketyl as your final product here. Okay. So that about covers the aldehyde and ketone lecture on acetyl and ketyl formation. I would encourage you to get a lot of practice with these. Uh, they are usually favorites for most professors to put onto the test just because of their relevance overall as you move on to things like biochemistry down the line. So head on over to chemcomplete.com. Lots of free resources to help you over there if you sign up for a free account. There are also guides available like how to pass organic chemistry and uh, spectroscopy if you're dealing with NMR and you're stuck on how to solve unknowns for stuff like that. We've got lots of resources over there. You can also support the channel with the new thanks button if you wanted to drop a dollar or two. And of course, the biggest support is that you continue learning with ChemComplete. I thank you so much for choosing us as your learning resource, and I will see everybody in the next lecture.